I'm Harry, this is Drum Electric, and this is the SBD1 pad that I am holding sideways. Should you buy it? Should you get it? Is it good for backing tracks? Uh, well, you can find out if you hit the link in the description where I've just uploaded a video to the Patreon page about what I actually think of this. But in the meantime, this is actually how you can run backing tracks for it because it is, it is quite good at that. So before I start any of this, I will say something that you do need for this is basically two cables and a power lead because when you get this out of the box, if you haven't got it already, it doesn't come with a power lead, but it does come with batteries. So you can use it out of the box, but I highly recommend buying an actual power adapter that goes in the back here because the last thing you want to do is be midway through a track and run out of batteries and batteries are quite expensive to replace so that just before we start any of this that's what i recommend and then the two cables is a jack stereo jack to two xlrs to give to the sound engineer and then just some headphones and probably a headphone extension so you can get from wherever you're mounting this to wherever you're sat so with that out of the way let's get into importing a backing track to the roland sbd1 wav pad it's quite a mouthful so as you can see on ableton i've just put together a backing track if you're looking to do exactly this so put a click to a backing track in ableton you can check out the video just up there but in the meantime i found this wonderful delightful track from epidemic sound i presume you'd use different stems for actual songs i just want to avoid copyright this is what it sounds like like. One, two, three, four. It's this great 80s track. I just found it, fell in love with it, and uh, if you've seen any of my recent videos, then you know that I'm weirdly addicted to 80s tracks like this. So that's the track. Now, normally, with this sort of thing, I'd say pan the click left, pan the tracks right, and then export that as a stereo track. But we don't need to do that, because the handy dandy thing about this is that you can actually have multiple samples on the one pad. So what we want to do is export the click track and then export the backing track. So in this case, I've just grouped the click and the, the backing track, the stems, the multi-tracks, whichever you want to call them, into groups so I can just solo it and then either go file, export audio slash video, make sure that the markers are around it so the render length is exactly the right place for you, and then make sure the sample rate is 44.1 and there's a WAV 16 bit because that is the sample rate that the SBD1 W SBD1 WAV, I think I was right the first time, that's the sample rate it can take. So export that, put that wherever you want to go, and then you can do exactly the same for the backing tracks. So solo that group. So all of the stems that you want are soloed and then export it in the same way. Just make sure that the markers are at the same point and that it's starting from wherever your track starts because you want to make sure that when you hit the pad, the click and the track start at the same time. The way I've done that is just put the loop marker around all of it and then solo all of the things that I want on that specific track. But feel free to do that in whichever way works for you. So once you've done that, then it's the fun job of actually plugging it in. So on the side here, there's the sensitivity and threshold knobs and then the micro USB input, which you just literally plug in, turn on, the red light will start blinking just up there and then it should in theory appear on your computer which is great. Now the folder structure is really important so don't go deleting anything just yet. When you open it you'll see this, it'll say Roland and then you have 1 to 12 and that's because you have up to 12 audio things that you can put onto this and you'll see that with this knob just here it says 1 to 12 all the way around and that's how you switch between each sample and track. So in this case I'm just going to put it on number one. Now you have two folders in here click and master and you can kind of see where this is going. You're going to drag your click track into the click folder and you're going to drag your master backing track your backing track into the master folder inside here i do already have the the demo tracks that you have with this pad i'm just going to delete that because i uh, i don't want afternoon jazz but thank you very much it is really important though that you keep the advanced.txt file because that is where you can adjust and really fine tune all the samples you can have up to three samples on this pad and switch between them we won't worry about any of that in this video but it's a handy thing to know because that's where you can change velocities samples things like that. So make sure you do not delete that file. I'm also going to go into the click and delete the afternoon jazz click track because again I don't need that and I don't want it. So now with that I'm going to drag my click into the click folder and I'm also going to drag my backing track into the master folder the backing track folder. So one last thing before we can eject the one pad and have fun playing backing tracks is just making sure that it's named correctly. So for click we want to make sure that it's click underscore ph. And what that does, when you look on the front of the one pad, it's got some text up here and it says basically one shot poly, one shot mono, phrase alt and loop alt. We want to make sure it's phrase alt because that means when you hit it once, it'll play it. And when you hit it again, it'll stop. If you don't put that, then it'll just, every time you hit it, it'll play again. So if you're playing the kit and you accidentally hit it, then you're gonna have like a double backing track going on and it's, it's not very fun. You then wanna do the same with the master to tracks 
underscore ph. Once that's done, then just eject the pad. See you later, Miner. The flashing light will continue, but you can just pull it out, and then eventually, in this case, it turned off. Oh, there we go. It's back on. Then is the fun bit of putting it and mounting it on the kit. If you haven't bought this yet, it does come with this mount in the box, which is really handy. If you have bought it, obviously you've mounted it and uh, maybe it's attached. You don't have to have this. It's quite handy because you can just screw it to a simple stand or something. But if you did have like a claw, you could probably just... Know what I mean? Now, in terms of cabling, like I said at the beginning of the video, hopefully you will have a stereo jack cable to dual tracks. That's purely just to give the sound engineer flexibility because it's highly likely that on the desk, they'll have a DI box. They can go into two DIs, XLR into the desk, job done. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this cable that you're giving to the sound engineer into the master stereo output. And that's gonna be the backing track. Now, the good thing is where we uploaded the click into the click channel, that will not play out of the master output. So we don't even need to worry about the click coming out of front of house. For the headphones, you're just gonna plug it into your headphone output. And the magical thing is that you can actually change the mix of the click and the backing track using the mix knob, which is just the one just there. Now this is really handy because it basically means you can send the output to the master output using this knob and give the sound engineer however much volume you want. And then you can actually adjust your mix with click and backing track within this. And I, what I do is I'd send the headphones output into a little mixer so then I can receive some monitoring from the front of house so I can hear my band. And then I can put this into that mixer so I can hear this and the backing track as well. And so after that, you just then rinse and repeat with all 12 tracks that you may or may not have. And you just switch between them all. I'd highly recommend grabbing a little piece of paper or a little bit of tape and just taping it across like the top of the pad and then just writing down which tracks are on which. Or if you're running charts on your gig, then just writing down number one is backing track for this track and number two is for this one. Because uh, I've been there where I've looked at my SPDSX and gone, I can't remember which samples are on which. Hence why it's covered in tape. Anyway, it's super simple and that's it. And now you have this wonderful little backing track square that works quite well. I do have some opinions on it, link in the description. But with that, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And apart from that, I hope you have a great day.